Hey guys, Morgan here from Paul Fishing Systems. Here's Caleb fishing with the new Swell Pro Splash Drone 4 into the Firth of Thames. We did a video here a couple of weeks ago using the Swell Pro FD1. Check it out if you haven't yet, the link will be in the description below. And we'll talk a little bit about the differences between them. So if you're looking at getting either of these drones, get in touch with us if you've got any questions at all. Well, um, welcome guys. Today we are going to be testing out the SD4. Um, we've got an FD1 here with us as well. And if you haven't already done, I uh, just want to encourage you to check out the previous video of us testing out the FD1 because um, I tell you what, not only was it amazing, we caught some fish, but we were able to chuck it in the water, do the water test and uh, hey, I was instantly sold on these bad boys. So today we are going to be um, testing out the SD4. Um, which is their latest drone and um, look I've never used one myself it's all about testing it out finding the best way uh, to utilize them whether they're user friendly whether they're challenging to use and then uh, getting some baits out and seeing if we can catch some fish which to be really honest with you will be a bonus today because uh, I think it's already 4 30 in the afternoon and um, we're out here to test out a couple of drones so I'm looking forward to it. In the previous test, we, we threw one of them in the, in the water and um, did the test there. So again, check that video out. In this test, um, we're actually gonna try and chuck it in upside down and see if we can flip the thing over and get it to return home. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, but let's, let's start from scratch. Let's get it all set up and see how that goes, eh? Right, so the first thing we've gotta do is put on our propellers. So, um, as you'll see on our propellers it's got CW on the other ones it's got CCW um, so I'll just point that over there as well and basically what that's talking about is clockwise counterclockwise so um, on the propellers here or the, the base for the propellers you'll see the same thing so CW over here CW as well and that just basically just giving you an indication of where this one goes and um, actually there's got a dot there so I'm going to try and get it to sit on that dot there we go yep counterclockwise yep counterclockwise that one on yep solid clockwise it's counterclockwise that's our clockwise there Yep. Perfect. Just make sure those are on perfect. Awesome. Right. So, um, just the next thing I want to actually just highlight is the antennas um, on these drones. So, they come with antennas that are completely waterproof, and um, you can either prop them down, depending on the kind of height you're going to be using, um, or you can have them facing up depending on how low they're going to be so already that's a, I mean that's a really cool feature to have and uh, man it, it is looking like a really solid drone so um, let's move on to the battery all right yep that seems to be in solid Cool. And just on the top here, you'll notice that there's a bit of a, a latch that you turn, just making sure that the um, the pointy part of it is facing the rear of the drone. Um, let's give it a. Yep, that's lit up. Excellent. So there you go. We've got all of the drone um, itself set up now, uh, and the next part is the remote control so now this one here has a little bit more um, going on with it a little bit more involved in it um, so it's got our GPS all of the different things that you would normally have on a drone but um, I'm looking at boat mode and I've heard a little bit about these things being able to launch from a boat come back to a boat and all of those sorts of things so they have got a 4k camera on them um, which we're not going to get into too much uh, detail about today but I mean, some of the features on these are amazing. So, um, hey, we're going to be testing them out for their waterproofing and their fishing abilities today. 
But um, I mean, that in itself, 4K camera, that you can see exactly where you're gonna be dropping it and all of that sort of stuff. So, right, now let's get into the remote control. So there we go. That's what it looks like when you've initially turned it on. Cool. Okay, so there we go. She's connected up to our drone now. Um, and now we're gonna do our um, compass calibration. There you go. So you pretty much just, um, there's a switch on the side here that has GPS. You just rapidly push that up and down. Um, first part, rotate aircraft horizontally. All right, so let's get into that. All right. Yep. Now you know that that's done when the um, Rear lights of the drone are flashing green. Right, now it's it's shifted on the remote, saying now compass calibration, rotate aircraft nose down. So basically we go from this position to nose down and we do the same thing again. So there we go. The flashing's changed its speed. And now the remote control says aircraft initializing. So yeah, that's the, the three stages there. The key is to set the drone um, down on a, um, a, a flat surface. You want to make sure that you're in a nice um, flat area because what that's going to do is it's going to set the um, angle for your your camera and all of that sort of stuff. So we'll let that initialize Right, it's saying we are set to go so um What I'm going to do next is get uh, and basically sorry the last step to that is turning it off Right, so that's turned off now. Turn that back on. Wait for that to reconnect, and then we will be good to go. So, yeah, there's a little bit more involvement with this one, if I'm to be um, really honest with how you break it down and how you get it all set up. A little bit more to it, but um, I mean, when I'm looking at some of the hardware on it, I do kind of understand that. So there's a little bit of a payoff there. Bit more involved in the setup, but um, a lot more high quality gear um, that you can instantly feel uh, as you're getting it set up. So, right. So what we're going to do while that's um, doing its thing, we're going to go and set up our rods, get some um, fresh bait. We've got some fresh kawaii today. Uh, we're going to get those on some hooks and uh, we're going to send them out there. Um, once this is all done, yep, that's done. So I'll turn that off. Save our battery. Right, here we go. Sweet, so now it's, um, we've got our props on, we've got our battery in. Uh, now is the time to turn it on and see if we've done it all correctly. There we go. Yep, she's alive. Um, you'll know she's alive. Obviously, you'll hear that sound, but there's a light flashing on the top as well. Um, right, it's just antennas sussed. Next part of this is grabbing our uh, remote control. That's just a push to hold. Let that fire up. But because there's no skin 
I went to a few different um, shopping centres today to try and find some fresh bait. Um, to be really honest, I'm just grateful that I was able to find some fresh kahoi, but um, yeah, they, they've skinned everything and um, even asking if I could have something with some skin on, got the big no. So, uh, have to break one of my rules, which is to put the, normally I'd only put the hook through once, just like that. Um, and with this particular bait, I might still be able to get away with that, but um, because we're having a cotton them on, it needs a bit more purchase in the bait. So for a few of these, I'm going to have to put the, the thread the hook through twice, um, which just means it doesn't quite sit as natural on the hook in the current, which is a bit of a bummer. But hey, we've got fresh bait. We've got some cotton. We'll be all right. Always want to try your best to make sure your uh, the barb of your hook is well exposed because that's the part that's going to stick into the fish. As always, we're using our target snapper hook tracers from Paul's Fishing Systems because they catch fish. All right, so we're all reconnected again. So this is where our clip's going to go in the bottom here. It's a mechanical release, and basically, this one's actually quite fast, so I wanna get that right. Actually broke. Can you push that payload left button? Push and hold that. I'll just get ready, yep. There we go. Sweet. So that's all connected now. Just like that. Always making sure that our wire, our line, our, our uh, um, hook section is out of the way. Just like that. And now, so we're baited up. Um, we've got all of our uh, traces, everything set on our um, hook section. All that's left to do is um, undo our bay alarm and see if this bad boy will fly out there. So, right, let's go do that. I'll just undo our bay alarm. Right. Yep. Get this out of our way. Get that out of our way. Right. Let's start this bad boy up. Okay. okay. Okay, so. Let's get this figured out. That's good. All right. <laughs> Over the top of that rod. And I'm going to send it out. A little bit more to the left just because of the rod positioning all right so we'll come over to our rod now now this is one of the advantages to having a mechanical release i can actually put a bit of tension on our um let's go a little bit more to the left on our line like so and straighten it up so if there's wind pushing your line to the left or to the right this is actually really good for being able to um, control that so we're going to stop it there yep 
So as you can see, if you can see in the distance, um, the drone is pretty much sitting in place. And um, I'm going to lock our rod in place just like that. And you, you basically push this button. Here we go. And as you saw the rod, it dropped it down into the water. Going to wind that up a little bit. And we're going to, on this, the control here, you can see, got our return home. Jump, push and hold, there we go. So on the remote there, it says returning. And basically, um, everything on the remote itself, you push and hold, it'll beep indicating that you've set um, whatever it is you're trying to do. and. Um, It'll then do its thing. As you can see, I can actually hear the drone coming, which is quite cool. Um, but that's on its way back now. And all that's left to do is tighten up our hooks. A little bit of left hand current. Get that set. There we go. All right. And just like that, she's home. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to manually bring it into land just because of um, where we originally pushed return to home. Um, it's actually landing exactly where we pushed the button, but I'm going to bring it over here and just manually land it. That is a landed drone. Um, wow. Man, I, I've, I've got to say, I am really a big fan now of the mechanical release. As you can um, sort of see, it's it's quite new to me. I'm used to the, um, the tension release where you lock the reel off. It drops your gear that way. But, um, I mean, just then our line was going out. Um, and because of the mechanical release, I could put a little bit of tension on it. It didn't affect the drone at all. Um, put a little bit of tension on it, control... Um, the sweep of my line, bring it a little bit more um, directly to the drone, uh, and then lock the drone in place. It was sitting up where I, where I had um, put it out, and then uh, yeah, when I was ready to drop it, was able to drop it. Um, pretty simple, really, pretty simple. And now we we've got five baits and a soft bait out there soaking, um, which is amazing because there's a mussel farm right there behind us, and. Uh, yeah, we're going to set up another rod, use this one again to set it out there and uh, see how we get on. So we're going to be fishing with two rods today, same baits. Um, it is all about testing out the gear. Um, and then after these, we're going to set out the FD1 as well. So um, yeah, just a few notes that I've picked up. A um, little bit more involved in the... Let me just save some battery. Yep. All right. So just, uh, um, just a few notes that I've picked up um, using this one compared to the FD1. So again, this is the SD4. Um, straight away, there's so many more features to this drone. Um, so many uh, different things, which we'll put in the description as well so that you can see. Um, 
and get a little bit more of an idea of the the, the range that this thing can can do um, but yeah a little bit more involved in getting this thing set up calibrated uh, all of that side of things but once it was set up man this thing is you can feel the power that this has um, the payload on this is so much more heavier as well um, so so far so good uh, I'm looking forward to putting it in the water to, uh, a little bit later on to be really honest but um, let's get our next rod set up we'll send that out there and then we'll go and do a few water tests awesome Right, so these have been getting some, some decent bites on them. Um, and we're gonna let them soak for a bit because we've got, obviously we've got six baits on each um, setup. Um, so currently we've got 11 fresh uh, strips of kahawai out on um, our target snapper hooks. Um, we've got yellow floating beads, orange floating beads, and um, some without any floating beads. And it's really hard not to watch these rods right now because they have been bouncing. Um, so we're mixing it up, trying different things. When we bring it in, we'll find out which, which ones are getting the most sort of success. Um, but yeah, we are using one bait today. Um, and on one of the hooks, we've also got a soft bait. So um, every time I'm out drone fishing now, I'm trialing out some type of lure. And uh, haven't had any success yet, but sometimes just that little bit of movement, a little bit of vibration in the water, brings stuff over to have a look and they find your baits too. So it's all good. Um, yeah, but while this is all happening, and we need to get distracted because those rods are going to just, I, I could sit here all day watching them, we're going to go and chuck a drone in the water, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So um, this is the SD4, come with me. Right, we're going to need our remote. So here we go, um, this is the SD4, the latest drone um, by Swalpro, and uh, we're going to chuck it in the water uh, and see if we can fly it out and return it to home. So here I go. I've got the absolute worst shoes for this in the world, but it's okay. Okay, yep. Yeah, well that well and truly went underwater. Uh, let's give this a go. Right, there we go, so far so good. That was too easy. A little bit too easy. Hmm, all right. This way, from here. Right, now we're going to turn it upside down. <laughs> oh, mate. Okay, you, you ready? Yep. Here we go. Swell Pro SD4. Water test upside down. Oh man, that's terrible. That felt terrible. Okay. No way. <laughs> no way. Bro. Bro, that's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> These oysters, bro. I'll tell ya. Alright, we're 
one peg away. Yeah, looks like it. A few baits are still not touched there. Mm. Oh well, here we go. We've got a snapper that looks, yeah, that'll pass as legal. One snapper there. Um, we'll go and set this into the bin and uh, we'll bring in that second set because that was getting some bites as well. But there we go. And I mean, we, we well and truly could have left it out longer, but um, we are trying to get this one filmed while it's still sun up. So here we go. SD4, done the trick. Done the trick. Let's go. Cool. Oh good! <laughs> yeah, I've been watching your video, that's why oh, I went to go and fish no, Good to meet you, mate. Good to meet you, right? <laughs> so, how did you get on? Um, it was fine actually. Um, This is my first time to use the drone. Oh, and, choice! Choice! Uh, we yeah. just got one Garner and Snapper. Oh my, no way. That's just losing. I don't know, but there's the baits are just gone. <laughs> wow, wow. Oh, good stuff, man. What hey? Nothing wrong with a gurnet in the bin, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't. Oh, there you go. Gurnet and snap. Actually, I might give them this one too. Give me this fish too, bro. Huh? It's not a big boy. Oh! But it is really oh, big. thank you. But yeah, give you a bit more of a feed, eh? Thank you, man. Oh, thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Nah, a bit more dinner there. That's the one. <laughs> Choice, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the video's coming. Yeah, we'll do both. We'll do. No worries. Awesome. There you go. The old condor AEE holding it down. Got a family out there fishing. Man. Nice. Nice to be able to get another fish too. Always really cool. Right. I think uh, I will re resist the urge to uh, let this stay out longer and start bringing it in now because the sun's gone over the hill which means we've probably only got half an hour left of, of daylight but um we'll bring them in yeah we'll bring them in all right let's see how this one's going about nine ounces of weight on this one. <laughs> so the gear um, that we're using, this is one of my old faithful reels. This is the Finnor Offshore. This is a 9500. You can get a size bigger, which is a 10500, but, um, and that's spooled up with, I think it's about 800 meters, a 60 pound Tesline braid. Um, and that's matched on a um, Finnor Lethal um, top water rod um, it's rated 24 to 37 kilo plenty plenty of strength there um, yeah and it's it's really good for drone fishing that's for sure you can really put some um, of the grunt in the top of the rod into the, the line retrieval and then on the other setup over there we've got the pen uh, spin Fisher 10500 and that's on a Tika Traveler 24 kilo uh, four piece rod. So, yeah, and that's got 900 and something meters of 60 pound Tesla braid. So, 900 meters of Tesla braid. Um, yeah, it's a real benefit if you can um, get to a place that's up a bit higher. And you know there's some real snaggy ground in front of you. Real good to be able to reel it in on, on, on that little bit of height. Just means your gear is constantly being lifted off the bottom. So, quite nice being able to fish up here. Make sure you subscribe to our channel to get notified of the newest videos we put out using all different fishing drones, as well as kites, contikis, and more. Also get in touch if you've got any questions about any of the gear used in any of our videos.